This is Tessa Keel, and first of all, I wanted to apologize because I did not set up the recording system correctly this morning, and so our North America Guild Hangout, uh, which started at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time, and perhaps that's the reason I was a bit off on the recording, uh, was a two-hour session which had, uh, I think at the height that had eight attendees and it was really a nice group meeting where we discussed a lot of aspects of the guild certainly with social media and how each of us works on our one name studies so I am sorry that we we didn't record it but I did want to give you a brief overview of what happened at the hangout for those of you who weren't able to attend and we did use the slides that I'm going to be showing you and I'm going back through the notes that I made at the time so that we can um, address some of this uh, in a group forum and also I'd like to encourage you if you're a member of the guild and you're watching this recording I would love for it if you would provide us with your input on these exact same questions or topics that we discussed during our hangout. So with that let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to do and you're watching this in a recording is uh, let everyone in the guild know um, if you're new to attending hangouts and even if you aren't that there's a couple things to keep in mind when you first get into a hangout you should open your chat window and that's been moved just recently but it is in the upper left hand corner and you just click on the chat uh, tab and this is really good when you're attending either guild hangouts or any other kind of hangout because it's helpful to put your questions in the chat section um, so that you're not interrupting other speakers. Uh, if you have a URL or if you have a site that you'd like people to take a look at, that's another good place to actually put that information so people can um, read the URL or copy and paste it into another program. And it's also a really good idea in case something isn't working quite right. Uh, it never fails that we have someone whose audio or their mic doesn't work and if they can't if they're not aware that it doesn't work they just keep talking and so it's really useful to be able to go ahead and type in in the chat box you know Kathleen your mic isn't working and then you can draw people's attention to things so that's that's one uh, little piece of advice the second one is always to check your settings when you join the hangout and then also to check them again once you're in the hangout. You are able to test your mic and your audio and it's really clear now in uh, Google Hangout whether that's working or not. The final piece uh, that I would tell you is that you're going to want to mute your mic when you're not talking. And the reason that you might want to do this is certainly if you're not using headphones uh, because then the sound that's going on in the rest of the room is going to be picked up whether that's an airplane taking off, your children talking, uh, a, an animal barking or perhaps a phone ringing and so just be aware that other people in the hangout can hear everything that's going on unless you mute your mic. And uh, the first thing that we did was welcome everyone to the Hangout. And we wanted to let you know that Google had made some changes to Hangouts just this past week. And we thought it would be helpful to take you on a quick tour so you could see what was different. And what you'll notice is, uh, if you're taking a look here, the screen has changed. And so now everything, instead of running across the top, everything is in the left-hand column. And when you click on any of these items here, it will actually light up or color up, as I say. And you'll be able to, you know, see what's involved and use it. Um, as I mentioned before, the most important one to open up right away is the chat button and then your chat window opens up over here. Any of the conversation that takes place will be um, kind of scrolling through there and when you want to add something in the chat section you type it down here and then hit the enter key and it just goes right into um, kind of the, the news read. Screen share is also very useful and 
the point of screen share, and if you've attended any of the Guild Hangouts, you'll be aware of this, the point of screen share is that we can share a screen, and whether that's that we're sharing slides, as I'm doing today, or perhaps you're going to go to a website and show us how to use it. If you use the screen share button and you share your entire screen that you're working with, it will come in much more clearly. The other thing you might want to do when you're sharing your screen is zoom in, certainly on a website that is a lot of text as opposed to pictures um, because it's a little harder for Google and maybe YouTube to pick up as much text and frankly with genealogy and one name studies a number of the sites we go to are for data mining or that kind of information so screen share is very useful to use in these meetings and you just need to remember that you might want to zoom in so that people get a better view um, I think um, the section that I mentioned up here, the other reason that I circled it is this is the section here which you can mute your mic now and you'll see that it shows up red when you have muted your mic. This is for your webcam. This is the gear tab and that is useful to check your settings. Um, that's a real important thing to do uh, when you're in the Hangout. And finally, and the thing that you don't want to hit until you're ready to leave, the telephone receiver which is kind of a uh, iconic throwback, um, is when you want to exit the Hangout. So this pretty much gives you um, a general idea of how the new screen works. The name of the Hangout is always going to be in this top section, and this is going to be the major screen. As you can see, no one's in the Hangout at this point, um, but all of the uh, 10 attendees would be listed with their thumbnails um, down in this section. And one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the thumbnail, certainly if someone is sharing their screen. Because if you do that, there'll be a blue box around that thumbnail, and then that is going to be the screen that stays in the center no matter who's speaking. So that's something kind of useful to know. Now the Hangout icons um, that I told you are listed at the left. Um, you can uh, increase the size of your screen by closing them if you want, and that's right there. As I mentioned, the name of your Hangout go is going to be listed here. If you want to invite anyone else in addition to the Hangout, if you have that ability, um, usually if you're the moderator, um, the chat button, the screen share. This is a real good one, the Hangout Toolbox, and we're going to be discussing this in a little bit more detail. But one of the things that's in the Hangout Toolbox right now, so you don't need to keep it separate, is lower third. Um, finally, w you could all watch a YouTube video together. And this is helpful if the Guild has a YouTube video, and that is where the Guild posts its Guild Hangouts. So if you have a uh, Guild regional group, you could all watch the YouTube together and then discuss it. So there's a lot of ways to use um, these Hangouts. If you open up the Hangout Toolbox, there are some things that are, I would say, just for fun, um, but there are other things that are useful, and one of them is Lower Third, and another one is Volume Control or Soundboard. So if you're working more along the lines of a um, moderator, um, you'll definitely want to have this extension. But we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about Lower Third. And simply put, lower third places some information in the lower third of your thumbnail. And you, once you open this or click on lower third, you can put in your name, you could put in a company name, or perhaps you want to put in um, your position in the guild, whether you're an administrator or uh, what region you're in or something like that. You can choose a color you can choose a file if you want. Um, I used this avatar that I also have on the bulletin board, but you can also choose an overlay um, and just play around and, and you can make this as simple or as involved as you want. But the important thing is that this lower third um, section will always show up with your thumbnail picture and so people are not having to hover over your picture in order to see what your name is. Now you'll notice here that um, it's inverse and you can set it to um, mirror in the new version of this but everyone in the Hangout is seeing your name correctly. You're just seeing your name 
inverse because of the way that it's set up. But in any event, that's called Lower Third. It's in the Hangout Toolbox. And I would really encourage Guild members to use this because as we have more people in our Hangout, um, it'll be very useful for moderators. Now Colin Spencer spoke a little bit about his one name study, specifically, you know, how he started it out, how long he's been working on it, how he set up his um, one name study website, uh, how he how he interacts among um, a blog, his website, and um, some other pages that he uses, and in fact how he has it set up, I believe it's in WordPress, to automatically take a post that he has and put it in the different sections, whether he um, uses something on um, Facebook or Twitter or any of the other social media sites that he's on. And I think that would be a real good discussion to have at another Hangout so that we could discuss what's the best method of getting our surnames out there and getting attention from people who might be interested in working with us on a surname study, but more importantly, might be interested in just providing us information on their own family. So uh, that was a that's a real helpful site to take a look at. I think it's a real good use of space and a real good use of um, colors. Um, and as you can see, he has sections where you can subscribe. Um, to his various websites and he also lists his links one of which is the Guild of One Name Studies but um, this is I think it's always important to take a look at other members websites or their blogs and you can gain a lot of insight from this and maybe make some changes to your own website. Uh, he also mentioned um, in passing this is a website that is not that is um, related just to his genealogy and he lists um, an, a lot of table of contents items which would be useful. I also pointed out, uh, because I don't have my profile done, I'm two days late, um, but I pointed out that one of the things that I had been working on for the Guild was the 20 with Tessa YouTube videos, which uh, I refer to as kind of a, a newbie who's stumbling her way through the Guild of One Name Studies and, a, and doing her own One Name Study now that I'm registered. Um, but these are on the YouTube channel and they're also on the Guild Bulletin Board and the Guild website. So I would be uh, more than happy to hear any suggestions that you have on topics that might be useful to you and I would be interested if any of you want to give a presentation on particular topics uh, we could do it in an interview format um, to make sure that those are freely available to people um, in a variety of uh, methods of social media so that we can all learn from each other. Now the first topic that we talked about with everyone who attended uh, was getting the word out and so I just kind of came up with a wordle for this to get us started talking and, and it took off from there but we discussed the various methods that the Guild has as well as methods that people just use on their own whether that's using a Guild profile, using their Google Plus profile, some people are on Facebook, other people have set up websites and blogs, uh, some people have gone as far as having a one name society, there's a number of people with that surname who are involved, perhaps they subscribe and have a, a yearly meeting. A number of people use a newsletter format, some people use Twitter, and a, a pretty significant number of Guild members are pretty involved in DNA studies and so uh, the discussion was generally how long various people have been working on genealogy as well as how long they have been working on a one name study and or been members of the guild. Uh, most people shared a little bit about their experience in spending time putting together a profiler or um, working on a website and what kind of responses they've gotten from the general public or people with a surname. And one of the things that we were pretty much left with was that there doesn't seem to be uh, a real great understanding of the Guild of One Name Study, maybe outside of England, and that we need to kind of step up and and get our name out there a bit a bit more, but also probably take advantage of 
where we show up in Google Analytics as well as some other search engine analytics for how we can make sure that we're making the best use of getting our name out there. And so what I did for part of our discussion is we talked about using a Google Plus profile and one of the examples that I used was Tony Timmons Google Plus profile and we're going to be speaking with Tony and putting together uh, either a hangout or an um, interview format to go into great detail on what he's done to really tie together his genealogy, his one name study, some blogs he uses, um, as well as his expertise with Outwit Hub, which is a data extraction program. But one of the things I noticed when I was first doing a little research for this is that Tony does an, an absolutely amazing job of putting his profile out there. And for instance, this is his Google Plus profile and everyone has this section running along their Google Plus page. And most people operate their Google Plus page at the home button and you just read through your stream. However, if you go down to the profile tab, it will list all of your posts. It will have an about section. You might have photos and you might have videos on it. We're looking at the about section and you can put a picture on. You can, um, there's an extended picture system here. You can use any items that you want. Google gives you some suggestions, a tagline, an introduction, perhaps your uh, occupation, employment, education, places you've lived. It also gives you the ability to list your other profiles and other sites that you might contribute to. And as you can see, uh, Tony's made a, a real effort, first of all, in an active voice to describe you know, why he's on Google Plus and what he's doing, and also to, to visually point out um, some other things that might get people interested in putting him in their circle as well as interacting with him. So if you haven't taken advantage of a Google Plus profile, I would encourage you to spend a little bit of time looking at some other ones um, for people that are popular in the genealogy or Google Plus field and then working on your Google Plus profile. I think it's, Tony mentioned that it was very, very helpful as far as getting people to look at his profile as well as getting people to go to his affiliated sections. And this is Tony's profile on the Guild website. And this is another one of those things where you can use some sections and he talks about his one name study. He mentions variants, talks about the origin of the surname, the frequency, and he also has his links. One thing I will point out to everyone is that contact details are not behind the member paywall and so I think you might want to use some discretion you know using your name and maybe your um, one name email a alias as opposed to including your address or some other personal information but in any event I think it's really important to use the links and it's very important if somebody lands on the guild website and wants to look up the surname and say they put in Timmins and then it comes back that that name's already registered and then it it literally gives you the opportunity when you're right there at the website to take a look at the profile for Timmins you want to make sure that you catch their attention with something that is active, something that's interesting, something that's to the point, and something that might even include them. You might want to say that you're working on particular areas and that you haven't gotten to a certain country yet, but you're interested in hearing from co-researchers or someone who'd like to assist you. Um, I think it's always better to be inclusive, and this might give you the opportunity to meet up with someone that shares your surname that wants to um, help share the load, so to speak, as far as research. And I put up the Lefebvre, I don't speak French, uh, my apologies, um, profile because this is Colin Spencer's one name study. And he mentioned that he originally put this up and that it's something that he hasn't really gone back to, uh, to add more information because he hasn't really gotten any kind of response here. And so this is another example, I think, of where we're going to want to maybe spend some time on our guild 
pages, whether that's the profile or archives or what have you, as well as other sites that we use to try and, and drive people um, to our sites. But um, this is something we really have to discuss because I don't know how many people are very successful. It seems to be that if you have data listed, you get people's attention. Also, if you have links, that's another good way to get people involved. And then finally in this section we talked about um, doing a Google search uh, and I did one for the Timmins with one name and this brought up first of all personal results because I had already looked these up and that comes to the top of the list and then you can also run the search again and just ask for um, all results. But there's 631,000 results a hundred of them are personal results for this and you'll see that Tony's done an excellent job of basically advertising himself and his one name study on Google and so this is as I mentioned something that we're going to want to take a look at how can we increase our standing in a Google search and during the course of the hangout uh, I think there were two people attending the hangout who went online to do a Google search on their own surnames and, and we're seeing where they came in into the scheme of things. So I would suggest that you do that for yourself and see what your results are. Now something that I think is important is people in North America would probably not refer to it as a one name study, they'd refer to it as a surname study. And so we did this with Colin Spencer's one name study. Uh, I typed it in a Google search for the surname and it brought up about 90,000 results it says uh, you know and it just starts out there so this is this is definitely something I would encourage you to do next we talked about using the guild website and the general conversation question was is anyone using the guild website do you find it easy to use uh, is there too much information too little information is it easy to negotiate what things do you like about it do you have any suggestions? It was basically just kind of a free-for-all discussion. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out at the outset, and I wasn't aware of this uh, I think until last month when I started uh, working on it for a newsletter, is that the two boxes on the far right hand side, the first one is index and the second one is search. So this is a book and a magnifying glass. So if you're searching for something in particular, say you want to look up profiles or you want to look up um, bookstall or something like that, the index lists everything that is in the website and this is a really good way to immediately go to what you want. You can also use the search button to do the same thing. Keep in mind that you can go to any of the social media here by just clicking on the item that you're looking for. This of course takes you to the Guild's YouTube channel. This takes you to the Guild bulletin board and certainly, and we're already there here, the members room. Something I wasn't aware of before either is that the news is always listed in here, so whether it's the reference to my videos that I just started um, or it's the reference to the fact that uh, we're supposed to be paying our dues uh, that we're due on November 1st, membership renewal and membership challenges are always listed here and updated. So that's something to take a look at. There's always news at the Guild website. I think a lot of the discussion was that most members uh, who were attending the Hangout felt that the website was a little overwhelming or that there's a lot of text to get through to find the places that you want to go and that's always a hard uh, that's a, a hard issue um, how much information to put out there how visual to make it um, but there were some great suggestions and and we'll definitely pass those on to the uh, webmaster who I think has probably the toughest job in the guild <laughs> and does an excellent job. Another thing we talked about was using guild resources and this is another instance where I just made a wordle to get us started talking about what guild resources individual members actually use whether people do telephone the member desk, whether they use the forum, whether they use the archive, uh, whether they've had contact with their regional representative. 
uh, whether anyone is using the Guild Wiki, and more importantly, whether people are updating the Guild Wiki, because the Guild Wiki is only as good as, as it is updated. And we did have, um, I believe that it was Gerald Cook who might have spoken to that, um, that he makes a point of updating the Guild Wiki, which is great, and we all need to make sure that we're doing our part. Um, I think that the journal is viewed by everyone who attended the meeting as the single best thing that the Guild does. It's informative as well as entertaining. Uh, a lot of people uh, comment on how helpful the marriage challenge is. It's certainly a huge cost savings for people who are able to use it. The forum and the bulletin board are good. There was some discussion about the fact that some members feel a bit overwhelmed with all of the social media and are wondering, do they have to pay attention to everything? Do they have to be involved in everything? And I think that the overall conclusion that we reached was that everything is going to be um, in the website and we're going to see if we can kind of push information to the website so that people are um, aware of what's brought up in the forum or the bulletin board or in um, Facebook or Google Plus or on Twitter in case you don't go to those places. You know, we want to have kind of one holding area for the news that only gets to, to one or maybe two of these areas. But I would also say not to worry too much if you only go onto the Guild website and perhaps the forum because you're getting about, I think, 90% of the information and maybe the other 10% really isn't of interest to you because it is it's just those quick conversations that people might have on Twitter or Facebook. Um, one thing that was not mentioned here or was not brought up on uh, my Wordle but I think is useful is random acts of guild genealogical kindness and this is something that doesn't get as much of a shout out as it probably should and we want to try and see if there is a way to really um, push that uh, forward into the members mind so that that we're doing it for other members and that we're also um, in addition to uh, providing random acts that we're also receiving random acts of kindness. So if you have any suggestions in that regard, um, I know that the Guild would love to hear them. We also really want to encourage people to watch the videos that are on the YouTube channel. The Guild YouTube channel is going to have um, you know, some of the seminars perhaps, or some how-to videos. We're always interested in knowing from you which additional topics you would like covered. And then we suggest, we talked about suggestions for improvements to the Guild. And one of the things, as I mentioned, is topics for Guild Hangouts, topics for YouTube videos. We wanted to discuss a little bit more outreach by the Guild to members, uh, whether that's through the regional representatives, whether that's through the administration. Um, although we did have an, a brand new member, Cliff, who spoke to the fact that having signed up recently, he heard from his regional representative, he heard from um, administration uh, individuals, and he felt that the Guild was very welcoming and very inclusive, and that's a really good thing to hear. Uh, so he was quite impressed with the, um, the start off of his membership. Another item that we were wondering about was assistance with One Name Studies. How much use people are making of, for instance, the profile or the archive um, or member challenges. And so this is just having a discussion about how you do your One Name Study, sharing tips, suggestions with each other and maybe helping each other with methodology for the One Name Study. And finally, we were discussing ideas for growing the Guild membership, whether this is a one-on-one -on -one type of thing that you mention to someone that you know who's involved in genealogy about the Guild, that you might be 
I would refer to it as an ambassador for the guild if you're attending a local genealogy meeting or perhaps a, a statewide conference or even a regional or national conference that as a member of the guild you would be able to speak to the guild, whether that is uh, wearing some kind of a button or a badge that identifies that you're in the guild of One Name Studies, and you know they could ask you about what the guild was involved in. Uh, another thing that we were talking about today was whether we should have um, a short video presentation or a PowerPoint presentation slides with speaker notes that we made available to guild members if they did want to volunteer and speak at a local or regional guild um, genealogy meeting. And so we were basically just kicking around lots of ideas in this regard and had a lot of good comments or or good suggestions from people and we also decided that it might be a good idea to put this uh, in a YouTube video as well as to post at the bulletin board and the forum so that people could give this some thought. This is not something that we expected people to have all the answers to this morning, certainly not at 8.30 in the morning, uh, my time. But if you have any ideas on topics for Hangouts for the coming year, on topics for YouTube videos that the Guild or um, I will be making, uh, anything that you think would be helpful for better outreach by the Guild to members, assistance with your One Name study, or suggestions you might have for growing Guild membership. And I think one of the things I'd say at the outset is we want to make sure that the Guild membership as it currently exists is satisfied and feels they're getting value for their dollars or pounds and is getting everything they can out of the Guild and then we want to proceed to encourage other people to join the guild because I think it's an excellent organization. There's so many people with so much knowledge here who could assist others who are starting out. And I think that the, uh, the rigorous nature of doing a one name study is something that really speaks well to making an individual's genealogy, whether it's a genealogy, a one-place study, or a one-name study work even better. The methodology is similar for all of them, and I think the Guild just has a lot to offer. Uh, then we opened it up to general discussion, which we had a lot of. Um, our meeting went for about two hours, which was really nice, and I think we learned a lot from each other. Unfortunately, since I didn't hit the recording right, uh, we did not record it, but if you have any comments on uh, this Hangout, the slide presentation that I just gave, um, I would be happy to see your comments on the Google Plus page or at the Guild Bulletin Board where this recording will be up. And finally, it's my understanding that the next Guild hangouts are going to be on December 15th, although I'll have to confirm that with the holidays. And my understanding is that the what I refer to as the Guild World Hangout, which is uh, Europe and England and Australia, is at 9.30 Greenwich Mean Time, and Guild North America is at 16.30 Greenwich Mean Time. So I would suggest that you use World Time Buddy to convert to your time zone because we had a few problems with Google uh, this month in that it was off an hour for what it was telling us our Hangouts were. So be sure whenever you see this just to realize that the Guild Hangouts are going to be on this standard Saturday at these two particular times, always. Um, that's what we'll schedule it. And we'll hope that the uh, the Google Plus Hangouts uh, get the sense of time down right for us. So I hope that this was helpful to get you started to at least know what we talked about this time. I am hoping that in the December 15th Hangout for Guild North America, we'll be able to spend some significant time with Tony Timmons 
to discuss his one name study and how he incorporates all his social media as well as Outwit Hub which is the as I mentioned the data extraction program which I think is really useful and really takes your spreadsheet program to a whole new level. It helps to easily gather the data from various websites and put it into uh, a really useful format. So we will plan on that for next month and in the meantime um, we'd love to hear from you what your comments or suggestions were to make the Guild even better than it already is. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next month.